personally, I got Tim Duncan in my top 10, 100%. You want to hear, okay, Michael Jordan, Kobe, Kareem, Magic, Larry, LeBron, Bill Russell, and Tim Duncan. You know what I'm saying? Um, he personally will never, ever, ever be the GOAT, in my opinion. Just because, uh, as a player who is playing basketball, I'm not supposed to be, you know, I'm saying, so bored. I'm nodding, looking like I'm nodding off the walk heart while I'm watching your game, brother. I heard he was extremely boring to watch. I try watching this game, and he is really boring. He's just very, just fundamental. No, nothing extra, which is cool. I mean, shit, he got five. <laughs> so fuck what I'm saying. But honestly, it is boring to watch. But making the case, Tim Duncan. Basketball is special. The size of the court and the lack of pads or helmets give fans the most intimate experience of a team sport that exists. And because of the that, different styles- I'm not gonna lie. That Reggie most Miller celebration, intimate experience of a bro, team sport that exists. I, that is the hardest emote ever. <laughs> like, that shit is so cold, bro. Doing it. Bro, that's cold. I'm not gonna lie. And because of the different that styles that basketball shit. allows for, Players develop their own distinct identities and signature styles through their creativity, flair, and athleticism. <sighs> and although no player succeeds alone, the scoring volume and two-way nature of the sport give individual stars a nearly unprecedented amount of control yeah. over the flow and outcome of a game. I could never say cash, because because look, look right there. Who that? Russell fucking Westbrook. I bleed Westbrook till I die. I could never say cash today. For this reason, players are fuck constantly Danny. compared to their peers and to Danny. the legends of the past Bars. in order to answer the most hotly contested question in the sport. Who's the greatest to ever do it? Oh, it's Michael Jordan. For many, the question's redundant. Yeah. They believe in only one right answer. Michael Jordan. Their answer. Others might have their own personal stance, but acknowledge one or two alternatives. Oh, it's Michael Jordan. But I believe that there's much more nuance to the question of greatness and more answers to it than you might heard. think. By my count, there are eight players in NBA history that have a substantial claim as the GOAT. It's a subjective thing, though. I can't give you a definitive answer. All I can do is make the case. So today, I'll be making the case for Tim Duncan top 10 for sure. as the greatest basketball player top 10. of all time. Definitely not the greatest Because he had... Let's be real, he's put in great situations. I want to say he was drafted, what, 1997? Or was it 98? Because they won in 97, and then they won in 99. So, yeah, he was good, put in a great situation. He was able to capitalize off of it. I know what you're thinking. No way. There's no chance that Tim Duncan is the GOAT. Yeah. He's not even the best player of his generation, you might say. You're thinking that there's no way. No, he Duncan is. He's, he's better than Shaq. He's higher to me than Shaq, for sure. Shaq is 11th all time for me. Um, Kobe is second. He's not greater than Kobe. Duncan belongs in the same company Shaq as some of the opinion. other players in this series. Just skill, yeah. I, if you I believe fuck, that, I, ref, I, I, um, I prefer skill rather than, you know what I'm saying, just brute strength. Personally, that's me. I would take skill all day. That's why he's hired. There's probably three things that you'll bring up as I make this argument. One, his second act. If you're the kind of person who rates players through spreadsheets, his career in the 2010s is statistically underwhelming. Two, his peak. You might say that Duncan never had a real peak, where he was the most dominant player in the league, night in and night out. That means nothing, because look at his fingers. He's holding up five. 
You know what I'm saying? So fuck all of that with three finals MVP. Like someone like Shaquille O'Neal was. And three, Greg Popovich. Duncan has always had Pop, one of the very best coaches of all but, time. But, 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 you can debunk that too. Wasn't he, I don't know if he was brand new, but he was the first coach. I mean, he got his first championship with, what's the face? So that's not a fair argument either. In his corner. I, I hear you. And I promise to address those throughout this video as they become relevant. Let's start with the big picture stuff. Duncan was a five-time NBA champion, a three-time finals MVP, sure. two-time regular season MVP, 15-time wow, All-Star, wow. and he made 13 15. All-NBA teams and 15 All-Defensive teams. Yes, sir. Those five championships are more than Larry Bird or Wilt Chamberlain won. Yep. His 15 All-Defensive selections are the most of anybody ever. Seriously? All-Star appearances are tied for- How many, how many Michael Jordan got, 10? Right? Something all like time. He has as many regular season MVPs Dang. as Kobe and Shaq combined. Wow. And only Michael Jordan and LeBron James have more finals MVPs. Don't forget about his college accomplishments though. Because remember, Duncan came out of Wake Forest after okay. four years. Despite people like Jerry West, who said he could have been the number one pick if he had left after his sophomore year. Instead, by the end of that collegiate career, he was a three-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time ACC Player of the Year, two-time Consensus All-American, and was the National Player of the Year his senior season. And when he heard his name called on draft night, he had left college basketball as its all-time leader in rebounds. That snapshot of a basketball career should be enough to have him at the table of any GOAT conversation. But you're not totally sold. To look at his career further, let's examine his place on some of the all-time leaderboards. Here's where he ranks all-time in the major Six? statistics. 16th, 6? Seriously? Okay, I never knew that. He's 6 in rebounding? 16 scoring all-time, but how long ago was this? 6 months, so this guy is fairly new. Not a lot has changed. Um... So most likely he still holds that 16 spot. Rebounding, he's sixth. Blocks, he's fifth. That's very There's impressive. There's some impressive stuff here, but for the most part, it doesn't really jump off the page at you. His career totals That's are impressive. substantially <laughs> less impressive That's than impressive. other players at his position, like KG, That's pretty impressive. Carl Malone, what? or Dirk Nowitzki. Position. What? Are you kidding me? Like KG. You're Come on, bro. Only thing that he's better at is assists. Okay. That's a few. His assists, not rebounds. KG is top 10 in rebounds, seriously? In 22nd? Wow. G. Nah. Carl, I, Carl Malone. I still pick what's the face Malone. over him. Or Dirk Nowitzki. Come on. <laughs> come on. Dirk top 15. Don't get it fucked up, but come on. It's not a comparison. It's not. Only thing he is is points. And yeah, he kills him on the boards, kills him with blocks, kills him with assists. I don't think with steals. But I and still that is pick because with you can't judge Tim Duncan's numbers like you can with most players. Imagine, in 15 years, if someone said to you that Russell Westbrook Dunk. was better than Steph Curry, citing how many points and assists and rebounds... I'm torn because that's my favorite player of all time. So, like, if I'm being biased, Westbrook the best player ever. You know what I'm saying? Westbrook is the best player ever. If I'm being realistic, fuck no. Fuck no. Hell to the fuck no. Nah, you know what I mean? Not Westbrook. Even close. You'd laugh. Westbrook, like, in my opinion, Westbrook's, like, top 25. If he were to get a championship, he'll be top 20, without a doubt. Right? Because you know that those numbers don't tell the full story. It would be impossible and irresponsible of me to talk about these players without mentioning the raw data that exists with them. Ugh. But by measuring players purely by their box scores, you're leaving out the context in which those numbers were achieved. The context that makes those numbers meaningful. 
Such is the case with Tim Duncan, whose success and greatness transcend a box score. You can't judge Tim Duncan with numbers alone. Timmy D the got a tag? That if you oh, ran a team and you could pick so from any NBA player to ever play the game, and your yeah, goal is to set your cute. team up for success, you would pick Tim Duncan. Yep. For one, you have his play on the court, and we are going to talk about some numbers here for a little while. Offensively, he was dominant through the first 10 years of his career. Okay. From 98 to 08, he averaged 21 and a half points, almost 12 yeah. rebounds, Very and three true. assists a game while playing on one of the slowest teams in the league. In those 10 years, his teams never once ranked in the top half of the league for pace. Adjust his stats for pace and look at his numbers per 100 possessions, and you're looking at a big man who was every bit 31 points, four and a half assists. 17 rebounds, three and a half blocks, one steal on 50% shooting ass. As productive as Same. any other offensive player in the wow, league. Wow, in 10 years. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. You already know about his skill set. He was, after all, the big fundamental. He could pass out of double teams face up and break down the defense with surprising agility, Ugh. consistently knock down shots from the elbows, and torch any big man in the league with his array of moves in the post and subtly imposing physicality. He could masterfully run a pick and roll with any guard with working limbs. Ugh. And of course, he had his signature bank shot, one of the most consistent and reliable shots of all time, right up there with Kareem Skyhook and Dirk's fadeaway. Those skills never deteriorated throughout his career, save perhaps his final year. And that's where I want to tackle the idea that his second act was unexceptional. Mm. His scoring numbers dipped in his last eight years, never averaging uh. over 20 points a game again. But as the Spurs offense became more collaborative and free-flowing, Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili shouldered more of that scoring burden as Duncan oh aged. My God, that's his shot attempts that's fell, beautiful. though he remained efficient. His skills hadn't waned. The Spurs just didn't need him to score 28 points every night. He retained his role as leader and contributed in other facets of the game. That's why in 2013, at the age of 36, Ooh. he became the oldest player ever oh named God. to an all NBA first team. He could pick his spots, put his teammates in position to succeed Shot. and save himself right. undue punishment and wear until it was needed. Duncan Dang. was never a prolific scorer, even in his prime. His game was never predicated on gaudy Dang point shot. totals like Malone or Dirk. With a different offense, he took fewer shots. With fewer shots, he scored fewer points. The whole time, though, to other places, he though. remained the whole package. Yep. He was a tremendous rebounder, the go-to guy in crunch time, Dang. and don't forget, the best defender maybe ever. Seriously? That's what hurts his stats what timmy d the, the greatest defender of all time seriously people be saying fucking scotty pippen is like one of the greatest defenders of all time i never knew that i knew he was a great defender but all time great that's crazy more than anything the lack of flashy numbers for defense outside of blocks and steals it's so hard to measure how much a drive was cut off because of his presence or how much a shot was altered because of his contention. There are some advanced metrics that attempt to do this, and although it is an inexact science, stats like defensive rating, defensive win shares, and plus minus numbers do an admirable job of capturing the game's best ball stoppers. Wow. Duncan's place in those metrics is unmatched. Defensive win shares, don't know what that means. Defensive rating, don't know what that means. Defensive block, I know what that means. Plus or minus 2.312 all time. That's crazy. These metrics, along with his record, 15 defensive selections. Who's first? Serve as a testament to how Duncan I'm a who's first. Can thrived when the opponent had the ball. Damn. Nate Silver's 538, a website that works with data and statistical analysis in every realm from politics to sports, published this article by Neil Payne. In it, Payne crunches several data points to come up with a player's war value or wins above replacement. In other words, how Does much better mean? were you than an average player? Payne's war statistic valued balance above all else, players who succeeded at both ends of the floor. Tim Duncan was the leader by a mile. What does that all mean? 
It means that Tim Duncan was a tremendous offensive player despite the lack of volume and one of, if not the, greatest defenders of all time. Great. In short, his value as a two-way player is virtually unmatched Ugh. in the last 50 years of NBA basketball. Yeah, he in my top 10, don't get me wrong. He's definitely in my top 10. Makes it easy to He's start and grow I know how good Timmy, Tim Duncan is. Don't get it fucked up. All backed by the world. He's, uh, he's in my so top 10. 100%. Off with the numbers. I want to talk about Tim Duncan when it mattered the most. The playoffs. And I want to use this time to dispute the idea that he doesn't belong in the GOAT conversation because he never had he a transcendent is. peak. He's top 10. Look at any numbers. Ever. Read any article, talk to any fan who paid attention to the game at the time, and you yeah, will come to Yeah, nigga, I want to say they took him out of the playoffs. Did they sweep them? I want to say they swept them in what, the second round? The Lakers. Like, this is them coming off of a 3 P. Same conclusion every time. Tim Duncan. Then, that's also when they had hella problems. Was a killer in the postseason. I don't know if they swept them, but I'm pretty sure they did. Comment down below if I'm wrong. Nearly all of his most memorable performances came in the playoffs, yeah. and more often than Ugh. not, came in crucial games when his Ooh, team needed him most. Ugh. From his near quadruple double wow. in the 2003 finals to close out the Nets and earn his second championship, to his 25 point yeah. first half against the Heat in Aye. game six of the 2013 finals 10 years later, there was never a moment that was too big for Duncan. Here are some of his playoff rankings. Significantly high. Wow. Blocks, he's first. Assists, 33rd. That's impressive for a big man. Steals, 46 of all time. Like, that's pretty impressive for a big man. Higher than him. That's pretty damn impressive. Third rebounding, six in points. That's impressive. Regular season stats. That's because one, he was in the playoffs more than anyone even, else of his era. That, even regular season stats don't even look bad. They look really good. And two, he's one of the best playoff performers in NBA history. Wow. His 99 championship run was phenomenal as he tore through a young Kevin Garnett, the newly assembled Kobe Shaq Lakers, Rasheed Wallace's Trailblazers, and the Patrick Ewingless eight seed Knicks on his way to being named the second youngest Finals MVP ever. Patrick Ewing? What? Patrick Ewing was still playing in the ninety and ninety nine, and he made it to the finals. Was that his second? That was right. That was his second Finals appearance. That's crazy. He is he incredibly underrated twice. as he carried one of the worst teams of his career to 60 wins and outplayed Shaq before being beaten by the two-time defending champs. Wow. 03 was his best season, and we'll talk about it in a second. Just know that his running mate, David Robinson, averaged eight and a half points and eight rebounds in the regular season, and that Duncan's win shares in that playoff run remained the most of anyone in a single postseason. In the mid to late 2000s, Duncan's teams remained fixtures in the playoffs against competition like Dirk's Mavs, Nash's Suns, and Kobe's Lakers. He repaid the Spurs by leading them to two more titles in 05 and 07. He gave us one of the great shots of his career in game one of the 08 Western Conference Finals against Dang. the Suns. Ugh. Like I said earlier, in game six of the 2013 Finals, at age 36, playing against Wade, Bosch, and Apex LeBron on the road. Duncan put up 25 points in the first half. It would have gone down as an all-time series clinching performance had it not been for History Pilot. Yep. He got his revenge in 2014 as the Spurs played the he best basketball six that has range, ever been played. Bro. Setting the tone in game one with a classic 21 and 10 while shooting nine of 10 from the field. And as his last playoff hurrah, trying to defend the title at the ripe age of 38, in game seven of a first round series against the Clippers, Duncan reached all the way back and put up 27 points and 11 rebounds, sinking crucial free throws to tie it before Chris Paul nailed a dagger. Damn, they lost. The same Tim Duncan that was giving the business to a 22 year old Kevin Garnett was the same Tim Duncan that was taking a 26 year old DeAndre Jordan to school. 
He was ready to win championships from the day he entered this league. That's, that's, that's my point exactly, bro. This is why I would never choose a, um, I never choose fucking strength over skill. Look at DeAndre Jordan. You know what I'm saying? DeAndre Jordan and that, and Blake Griffin niggas who literally based their whole skill set off of high flying and dominating with strength. Fucking pulverizing niggas with strength and backing down niggas into the paint. That don't last long. Like, that shit is very out, I mean, short lived. Like, this shit does not. You don't see that shit dominating leagues. Like, how long Tim Duncan was dominating the league. Nigga won a, a ring in what? Is 36 years? He was 36 years old? Like, uh, yeah, bro. It's just, it's no comparison. Was bro. the same Tim Duncan that was taking Skill a 26 year old. Is way better than strength deandre and jordan i think to we school. all can agree with that he was ready to win championships from the day he entered this league to the day he left it and i think that's why his peak is used as an argument against him the fact that his championship window lasted his entire 19 year career and that his teams were always somewhere between 50 and 60 wins means bro, that it's hard so for crazy. any one of them to stand out that from the rest so crazy and bro. for some unfathomable reason being consistently great is less of an accomplishment than being great for a short stint. Yeah, but if nah, any of them do stand out, that. it's his 2003 season. Okay. After leading his team to 60 wins and his second consecutive MVP, Duncan eviscerated oh, everything in his path as he tore through the playoffs. He upended the Suns, ended the Lakers' three-year reign as champions, and outdueled Dirk. Comment down below, what, how many games did they beat them? The Suns, Ended the Lakers' three-year reign as champions. How many games? And outdueled Dirk before absolutely torching the Nets in the Ugh. finals. By the time he was holding the trophy, it was clear, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Duncan was the league's best, most complete player. Listen, I'd be lying if I said that Duncan's peak was higher than Shaq's. Shaq is the most dominant physical force. But, like, since. look at how long it lasted, bro. Yeah, it got him three rings, but... After that, he was a shell of himself. Even when he was with Miami, he was nice still. Don't get it fucked up. I don't know too much, but I know that much that he was not this. Like, at all. He was good. You know what I mean? He was the second option on a great team, on a championship team. But he was not this. I know that much. It's Will Chamberlain. You know? That shit don't last. Because even, not, not just that it don't last... Number one, people learn how to stop that. You know what I mean? It's not that hard to stop. Just crash the paint. And he was just a freak of nature. They would crash the paint. He, he just dunk all over him. Or body the fuck out of all of them. You know what I'm saying? It's a picture of this nigga bodying the entire fucking Nets. Nets lineup. Just unstoppable shit. But until it wasn't unstoppable. Then he became... Low-key useless, jumping from team to team, nowhere near as successful as he once was with the same type of play style. It's just, whereas Tim Duncan, very consistent play style that just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That, um, that stems from just strictly skill, and you see how, how, how much greater his, his career compared to Shaq's, and these are two all-time greats in my opinion. You just see how much greater his chance, his career was compared to, to compared to Shaq's, you know. But even still, there has never been a player at his position who has come anywhere near the apex of Timothy Theodore. Duncan. I agree. The truth Nobody. is that Shaq was so much more of a spectacle. To watch Shaq at his peak was unlike anything else. To see someone of his size and stature yeah, he was so just powerfully like, literally and fluidly couldn't stop is him. still something of a miracle. To see Duncan at his peak was a lot like seeing him Ooh, seven or eight years here. later. He was just a little faster, a bit stronger, and a touch quicker. See? But do aesthetics equal superiority? I'd say no. And although Shaq in his prime was certainly a more dominant offensive player, there was never a time when he could match Duncan's abilities as a defender 
leader. I'll take teammate. Tim Duncan all damn day, bro. All day. Don't get it fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I know how good Tim Duncan was. You know what I mean? It may not seem like it. I know Tim Duncan was like that. The two are antitheses of each other. Shaq loves fame. Duncan loathes it. Yeah. Shaq would sometimes show up to training camp out of shape. He never Often would. battled with his co-stars and finished his career having played for six different teams. You know what I'm saying? Duncan took great care of his body, Look. cemented himself as the great cornerstone teammate. of his franchise, and is one of the most celebrated teammates in NBA history. Mm -hmm. Shaq cared a little too much about what everyone thought about him, while Duncan couldn't have cared less. And while I'm at it, addressing these points of criticism, let's go ahead and tackle Pop. He would be the first one to tell you that he wouldn't be here without Tim Duncan. For one, Duncan can play any style of basketball in any era. You want to go old school? Slow pace, yeah, dump ass. it off to the big man down low, let him bang and be solid on defense? He can play that. Titles. Remove the hand checking and illegal defenses. Can yes. Increase scoring and start moving toward the perimeter? Titles. <laughs> and when the league went small ball, wow. the pace exploded and shooting and ball movement became more important than anything. Yes. The Spurs posted the largest margin of victory in NBA Finals history. Second, he can play with any team. Honestly, has any superstar done more with less? Jordan had Pippen his entire run and Rodman for the last half. Bird had McHale and Parrish. Wilt had West and Hal Greer. Russell had Kuzi, Jones, and Havlicek. Magic had Kareem and vice versa. Kobe had Shaq and vice versa. And LeBron's had Wade, Kyrie, and Anthony Davis. Duncan's best teammates, Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili, okay, combined wait. for three third team and three second team All NBA appearances. They're great. All right, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. We're not going to act like Mono Ginobili and Tony Parker. They aren't like that. That's where I draw the fucking line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. Mono Ginobili and what's the face? I get it. I know he didn't say that. But, like, he had good pieces for a championship run. They low-key be trying to throw out these slights. Like, oh, he, he had less of that he had. He did on paper. But these are still great players. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I don't like Great that. players, like that. and they're like both that. in the Hall of Fame, and not to take anything yeah. away from okay. them. Okay, good. But good Duncan's job. most important running mates are the only ones that I've mentioned who weren't on the NBA 75th anniversary team. They weren't? Watch World Class. Not Tony Parker? Okay, that's crazy. I'm not gonna. He has a finals MVP! Nah, that's why I'm not gonna lie. Are you kidding me? You didn't put Tony Parker as top 100? What? That's crazy. I'm right. not going to lie. Networks, Third, and most important, I don't like that. Duncan forged the culture of the Spurs. Pop was essential in acquiring players and reinforcing the culture that Tim Duncan wanted. But Duncan was truly the most vital component. The NBA is a star-driven league, and finding a great player who hasn't gotten a coach fired is like finding a good Star Wars movie. This is There's also people. ah, he Loki might move up my list. This is all, I'll, I'll let it far right. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Not only did Duncan not get Pop fired, he let Pop coach him harder than any superstar has ever been coached. If Tim had ever thought to himself, you know what? I don't feel like getting my chops roasted in front of everyone today because I didn't box out right in practice. He could have gone right to RC Buford, and Pop would have been gone. End of story. But Tim understood what Pop was about and trusted him enough to be mentored in an unprecedented way. He set the example for his teammates that no one is immune to criticism and that it is expected of everyone to leave their egos at the door. In 2017, the Spurs SB Nation blog, Pounding the Rock, spoke to Sam Walker, author of The Captain Class, a book that examines winning culture in sports from field hockey to rugby. In an exchange, Walker said this, the book's main conclusion is that the only one factor that must be present in order to maintain greatness over a long period of time is the presence of a particular kind of selfless, relentless, independent-minded, publicity-averse, emotionally-composed captain with strong communication skills. 
this is why I say LeBron is will never and I bro I am telling you it's like I'm a fortune teller. You know what I'm saying? LeBron would never be the greatest of all time, not only because honestly the more he plays, the more his his character gets exposed. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, Tim Duncan, great leader, great success. You know what I'm saying? LeBron has his later later years, bro. He started. No, nah, I don't. I don't even think it was later years. I think we just kind of overlooked this shit, just because he was he's he was having so much success within the league. You know what I mean? What what was it? Ten consecutive finals appearances. Like. <laughs> You know, so you're, you you can't really say too much about what he's doing because he's having success with what he's doing and the play style and all the, um, uh, his way of leading the team and shit is, is getting you to a championship. What can you say? Got you a ring? What can you say? As of now, it's not as successful. So now we're like dissecting his character and it shows he's really not a good leader. His skill just makes up for it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. Tim Duncan? I don't know, bro. I don't know. Dynasties, you know what I'm saying? You look at Tim Duncan, you think of dynasties. You know what I'm saying? You look, you think of LeBron. Comment down below what you think of him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's I Tim know Duncan. it's nothing compared to Tim Duncan, Michael Jordan, or Kobe. Greats. You know? What a leader! What a true leader mindset, though. Not, 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 not this new shit. Where I don't know, bro. Duncan, you, you get Duncan my Duncan was a pure example of the species. I love Pop, but it's a fact that Tim Duncan was the catalyst that empowered Pop to be what he is now. Yep. This isn't Belichick Brady, where you can make an argument about who made Wait, who. Do he validated Pop him is one of the greatest so coaches of all time because of Tim Duncan. If you want to take credit away from Duncan by saying that he played for the best teams, you might be right, but that's only because he made them the best team. He gave up touches, let other guys hold the torch, put everyone around him in the best position to succeed, and he enjoyed it when they did. When I said earlier that the thing that hurt Duncan's stats more than anything was a lack of defensive numbers, I lied. The thing that hurt Duncan's stats more than anything was the fact that he never gave a shit about stats or awards. He wanted his teams to succeed, and he wanted to win. Yep. That's it. That's a true leader. You don't see that much no more. That's that's what I was trying to say. Well, LeBron, bro, it's like he's staying in the league for accolades. You can just tell, bro. Like It's just individual accolades he's chasing. This nigga's caring about, I should have been one defensive player of the year. Why didn't I win another MVP? You know, why am I not? It's just a bunch of bullshit. You see this nigga fucking... The first thing he do when he start losing, what's the first thing he do? He push and blame. He push and blame. Oh, uh, I didn't know what we were doing. We were just lost out there. Just, just um, my teammates, they're just not working hard enough or just uh, implying sh just weird shit. That's not, in my opinion, that's not how I view a, a leader. You know what I'm saying? That's not how I, I look at Michael Jordan. That's not how I look at Kobe. That's not how I look at Tim Duncan. You know, he's just, he'll never be in the GOAT conversation. Like, top three, he'll never be that. Top five. He was either. a generational badass with an all-time skill set. The most complete player who has ever played the position of power forward. But if anything has hurt Duncan's perception as one of the very, very best players who has ever played, as a player who is criminally underrated when it comes to conversations like this, and for consideration as the greatest player who has ever played basketball, it would be that he was a mellow dude, a technically savvy big man who did what he did without fanfare, celebrations, or ostentation. It just wasn't him. And you know what? It worked wonders for the team, for himself, and for his teammates. Just listen to the way they talk about him. I don't think there's a more beloved teammate than Tim Duncan. He was always the big brother, correcting them when they made mistakes and throwing his arms around their shoulders when things didn't go their way. He led in the most effective way possible, 
by example. Of all the end of career farewell wishes, this is the one that stuck out to me the most. To be good is noble, but to show others how to be good is nobler and no trouble twine, twain for your brilliance, TD. From his former teammate, Brent Bonesberry. He quoted Mark Twain by saying, to be good is noble, but to show others how to be good is nobler and no yeah. trouble. For your brilliance, TD, I am grateful. For your skills as a player, I am in awe. And for your friendship, I am honored. Former Spurs assistant and former Bucks coach Mike Budenholzer said to ESPN's Kevin Arnovitz, the magnitude of that, the number of people in this league who have enjoyed opportunity or found fortunate spots, you can trace it back to this one guy, to the way Timmy played ball and the way he conducted himself. The culture is Timmy. The NBA is a league of superstars and dynasties. From Russell to Jordan, from Chamberlain to LeBron, we remember its history through its champions. And in the history of North American sports, no one has been as good for as long as the Spurs. San Antonio's success is completely unprecedented in the world of basketball. Aside from his lockout shortened sophomore season, Duncan won 50 or more games and qualified for the playoffs in every season wow. of his 19-year career. That's he impressive. finished that career with a win percentage of 71%. That's 19 wow. years of winning over 70% of the games That's in which crazy. he played. That's it is the crazy, best mark dude. across a 19-year stretch that any basketball team has ever enjoyed. In fact, it is the best mark across a 19-year stretch that any team has enjoyed in professional North American sports history. Wow. The Spurs' run of success started in 1997, the year they drafted Tim Duncan. Since then, he has been the cornerstone, the engine of the franchise that has perpetually defined what winning culture looks like in and outside of basketball. And so I say again, if you ran a team and you could pick any NBA player from any era Definitely. and your goal was to win, you would pick Tim Duncan. Mm, would I? Mm. His abilities as still a Still picking Michael. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm still picking Michael all day. If not Michael, then Kobe. Basketball right, player are what Don't get that a superstar. Up. But his consistency willingness to be coached, love of his teammates, and his humility are the things that make Tim Duncan transcendent. I'll let Pop have the last word. Here he is after Tim Duncan announced his retirement. You know, everybody right, always talks about cry. who they like to eat dinner with. You know, if you had one night and you could go to dinner or go to lunch with so-and-so, who would you like to do it with? And people say, you know, Mother Teresa and Jesus and the Dalai Lama. And, uh, okay, I get it. And, and I can honestly tell you. Yeah, he's trying to cry. Uh, my dinner would be with Timmy. Uh, and it would be because he's the most real, consistent, true person uh, I've ever met in my life. So wait, I got a question. So is his hair just white or cause as long as I remember, this nigga just has white hair. Like just completely white hair. Well man, if you enjoyed that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, comment down below. What is you who who's your top ten? You know what I'm saying? Is it as elite as mine? I doubt it, but good try. I'm out of this bitch, man.